In previous podcasts, I walked you through several steps, which included preparing the job description, writing your interview questions, interviewing candidates, checking references, and determining an appropriate salary. And that's a salary that is fair and equitable. Now, let's talk more about making the job offer. But first, I can't emphasize enough the fair and equitable part of the salary offer that you make to a candidate. You really don't want to play games with a candidate by offering what might be an artificially low salary just to see if you can get away with it. Whenever possible, offer your job candidates what is appropriate for the job market and appropriate for your company in terms of equity. If you find that there are financial reasons why you can't offer a competitive salary, think about other ways that you may be able to supplement a salary that is lower than what might normally be paid in your region and be upfront with your job candidate about this salary offer. Now, some other things to think about are allowing your employee to work a flexible schedule or work from home. Try to think out of the box if you can If you think salary is going to be a challenge, be creative in what you might be able to offer the employee that might be a win-win for both of you. Now it's time to make the job offer. Give your candidate a call and extend the job and salary offer, but keep in mind that your candidate may want to negotiate. And if the salary is not negotiable, it's a good idea to tell the candidate that up front as part of the job offer keeping in mind that you should be sensitive in the way you communicate that message. If the candidate's salary is negotiable, think about how much more additional salary you might be willing to pay if the candidate indicates that they're looking for a higher salary. Now, after making the offer and sharing any details such as the work schedule or benefits, ask your candidate if they have any questions. And you should really extend them the courtesy about thinking about the job offer. After all, they've likely waited days and often weeks to hear back from you. And it's likely that your final candidate will want to discuss the job offer with someone or at least think about it before letting you know of their final decision. I find that there's sometimes a tendency to become concerned when a candidate wants a day or two to think about the offer, but don't assume that it's because the candidate is not interested in the job. They really may just want some time to think about your offer. Now, it's always a good idea, if at all possible, to have a second and third choice candidate in the wings, just in the event that the person that you extend the offer to does not accept your job offer. If you follow the steps for interviewing and hiring candidates that I outlined in earlier podcasts, all of your final candidates should be very strong candidates that you should feel confident in extending an offer to should your first choice decline your job offer. If your final candidate does decline the offer, be sure to find out why. Feedback is going to be extremely important and it can go a long way in helping you to tweak the job or salary if at all necessary. Now, once an offer has been made and it's been accepted, let the candidate know immediately what the next steps are in the hiring process and some tips on what you might want to discuss with the candidate after your offer has been accepted include confirming a start date and time, reviewing their work schedule with them, discussing company benefits, and anything else that you think the employee should know to make their transition into your company easier. You should also send your new employee a confirmation letter, and that letter should include the details of your job offer, such as the job title, the work schedule, the start date, and the salary, among other things. The confirmation letter is a great place to include any other details that you feel an employee should know prior to their first day, including whom to contact if they should have any questions prior to starting. And then you're done. So thanks for listening, and I hope you'll be back soon. You're listening to Easy Small Business HR's Employee Hiring and Managing Tips podcast. Get timely information on how to hire and manage staff delivered straight to your email box. Go to www.easysmallbusinesshr.com and sign up for your HR Quick Tips newsletter today. Remember, we will never sell your email address and we don't spam.